Good evening. Welcome back to Frugal Outdoors and myself, Dylan. And sorry I missed a week. <laughs> You'd have already seen another video from the pier, but I just didn't get time to edit it. So essentially, I've had a week off, which has been quite nice. So we're out tonight, and I am out fishing with Jacob, my stepson, and we're out on our conga hunt. Now we're fishing at Freshwater Bay, and the last time we fished here, he got himself a nice little bull hus, maybe three pound, three, four pound. So out fishing me basically, as he normally does. He's there, getting set up now. Uh, so he's got two rods tonight, and I've got two rods, and I'm trying out a new rod. Uh, well, I'm borrowing a rod, I'm not trying it out, let's just put it that way. I'm borrowing a rod from Nobby, just to see how I get on, just on the off chance that I ever fancy replacing one of mine, which at the moment I don't but he's insisted on letting me try one. So I've got a new rod to have a little go with, a little play. But yeah, conga fishing. So we've got, uh, bait wise, we've got some mackerel and we've got, so we've got whole mac big mackerel, we've got some joeys and we've got some uh, squid, but I'll show you that in a sec. It's daylight still, which is nice. I've just come home from work. We've rammed some food down our neck and we're out fishing. It is absolutely glorious here. I do like this as a bay. Do you know what? I've only ever fished from there once. And it's stunning, really should fish from there more often. But you get sucked into that easy thing. Look, van is right there. We reverse down, get your kit out, set the rods up. You fish on a hard stand in, it's super comfortable, it's super easy, it's super lazy. But hey ho, we're fishing. Let's get set up and I'll bring you back in a sec. Cheers. Right, let's turn you around because again, that sun, where that sun, that's better, isn't it? Where that sun is sort of behind us, the light, you can't really see. So this is the rod that I'm having to play with tonight. Now, I've never used an Akios rod before. Um, and it only really came to my attention recently that they actually, uh, they do some really quite nice rods. I know that they had some other rods the fury and stuff and to be honest when I first started the first upgrade rod I was looking at was that because I think for like sort of 140 150 pound the reviews are really good on it so but I didn't opt for that I opted for uh, the Tronix Pros the competition match but again I bought both of those rods second hand uh, before uh, anyone goes well they're expensive and they were expensive but like I said they're second hand so today I'm having to play with the, I don't even know what it's called. It's the Air Power Surf 420 GTR. It's a two piece, it's a brand new rod, and it's got a glass tip. So completely new to me, again, I would imagine most of the rods I've been fishing with, those Tronix Pro competition ones, they were a bit of a wobble stick, to be honest. I mean, in my humble experience, they were quite soft. Uh, and I don't think, I mean, I'm sure in the capable hands, in the right hands, um, somebody could probably launch that baited 200 yards. Um, I can't launch any rod or any bait 200 yards, I hasten to add, but I just felt like I couldn't get anything else out of it. And those Daiwas that I've been fishing with, I really like, I've got to be honest. Uh, but yeah, Nobby said, try this. See how you get on with it. He thinks I'm going to love it because I really like quite a sensitive tip because I want a, a one rod fits all sort of thing. This is heavy enough, it's got enough backbone. Uh, I think this will cast seven ounces, something like that. It does say it on there somewhere, I'm sure. Maybe not on this one because he's got his, his grip all over it and he's put different shrink tubing on it and such. Oh, there we go. So yeah, cast in weight is three and a half to seven and a half. Um, but Nobby's a pendulum caster and he's cast seven ounces and a bait with this and he said it will handle it no problem. 
Uh, but the thing is, I want something that's going to pick up a bream. I love bream fishing. Um, I love catching power. I love catching fish. This is the thing. I don't want to go out with a rod <laughs> that is only going to be good for catching a smooth hound or good for catching a ray or good for catching a big conger when actually I might be targeting a conger one day and the next day I might just be wanting to go and have a play like I am tonight with Jacob. But we'll see how we get on. Let's get a, re let's get a, uh, a reel on it anyway. We'll get some baits and then we'll chuck it out. <laughs> uh, okay, quickly then, uh, just getting some bait out. So the bait we're using today is the calamari again. I do, like I've said before, I really like this squid. It's just a little bit tougher. They're a bit bigger. If you want to put a whole whole one out, you don't have to bind two together. It's just one nice big calamari. I know there must be, I don't know, eight to 10 in there. Uh, we've got some really chunky, chunky looking mackerel. And then I've just got a pack of, a uh, small pack of joeys as well, uh, which actually he was backpacking for me while I was there. So that is our bait this evening, all from Kraken Sea Baits from Slamfish Isle of Wight, straight out of Newport. Cool, man. That's quite, honestly, that's fine. Right, just, Jake's already cast out and I'm just getting my rigs ready. So I made a couple of new rigs for tonight. So it's basically, it's a sm splash down. It's a pulley rig, uh, 90 centimeters. I tend to make all of my rig bodies 90 centimeters, give or take. By the time I've knotted them, sometimes they're 80. Um, and then obviously the hook snood is slightly shorter. So this is 80, this is 80, but I'm fishing a bit bigger. We're both fishing one of these rigs because we are after that conger. So I know technically we should be using really, really heavy line, but you know what? If we get a double figure conger out of here, I'll be over the moon. We're looking for five, six, seven pound congers. We're not looking for giants. We're looking just to try and get one. So I've got a 5.0 big mouth extra on there. And that's a 6.0 circle hook held on with a little bit of rig tubing. So this is going to obviously fish the bigger bait which will just be a mackerel and squid wrap to begin with then maybe straight straight mackerel straight squid but let's get this baited up and let's get it out so i've filleted off one fillet of mackerel now i've cut it slightly at an angle so i can elongate both pieces of the bait then i'm going to strap up a piece which basically i've taken a whole squid taken a whole squid i've whacked two strips off it for the other rig because I'm just going to put a flapper out just to muck around basically and then the rest of it has gone on there so all the head and guts and everything I'm binding onto the skin side so all the flesh is there flesh there squid there I'd say not massive baits but big enough I'd like to think big enough to hopefully get us a target species Definitely a chance of picking up a bass here tonight. But as to other things, obviously a bull husk potentially. I mean, it is absolutely stunning out there today. But yeah, let's get this on a hook and in the water. All right, and here we go. So I've still got the um, my mono on. So that's actually, it's a low diameter, but that's 25 pound. It might be even 30 pound. Uh, but then I've got a 60 pound leader on there. Uh, this is obviously, this is on the uh, the Air Power Surf 420 GTR, which I believe is 13.9. I make it 13.9 and everyone says they're 14 foot, but when I had those Tronics, they were also 420 and they were most definitely 13.9. But anyway, uh, Shimano Power Aero, I always forget what they're called. And then there we go. There's that nice bait. So, like I say, that's a pretty decent sized bait, I reckon. We'll get that out there though. Tell you what I'll do, I'll face the camera the right way next time while I'm casting it. So I'm looking for a really simple little two hook flapper rig. No, you're all right, mate, you carry on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have, have yeah? <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> well, yeah, fishing. Fishing, not catching yet, but hopefully, you never know. 
Uh, yeah, so just going through my rigs, just going through my rigs, and uh, I'm just going to use a really simple two hook flapper that's got size ones. I think they're either chinoos or semicircle size ones, maybe even one o's, uh, but they're certainly small. They just got a couple of little. Let me get it out, shall I? That'd probably be the best thing, wouldn't it? Actually, show you. Uh, yeah, just in case we can get a pout, really. If we can get some fresh bait, that'd be ideal. A nice fresh pout, and then we'll just chuck it straight back out. But there might be a rocklin out there. There might be, I don't know, what other small species. But, like I say, it's a little bit of a hit and miss venue down here, to be honest. But there's a bunch of guys fishing over there. Another four or five anglers. They're all on the beach. There we go. So, yeah, finally. Right, so there we go. So, I don't know, 1200 maybe. And then it's just got some shorts, I would say 300 mil. Little, uh, little hook snoots on there. Little sliding stop knot. Couple of, um, couple of glowy beads. Like I say, essentially really for a pout. There we go. But likewise, you never know, it might pick someone else up as well. So let's get this baited, get it out. And literally all I'm doing with this is those two strips of squid that I said I've cut off those. It's a full length of the, uh, the squid. And this is why I like those squid in particular, because I just find them a little bit tougher. So this won't be getting bound on or anything like that at all. Literally fed up, stick it over the, pull it over the knot, and that's it, it'll just go out like that, flapping about. I'm not gonna whack it, so. And that, that's essentially how I fish for uh, bream in the summer when they're in. Super simple, but you do need the right sort of squid for it because if you put that, sometimes you use the uh, Sam C6s and they're a little bit, they can be a bit soft. Uh, in which case, when he casts, it just flies off. But it's only, it only takes a little bit of whipping and then it stays on there fine. Right, there we go, let's go. Right, this one, we're literally gonna, I've got one basically straight in front of me. So the one basically where Jake was stood, there's one basically going over his head. And this one, I'm gonna chuck more in the middle in the hope of, uh, yeah, just having a little scratch about recently, a little bit of fun. Let's get that out. There we go, and they're out. So typically, first chuck of the first rod <laughs> that I'm supposed to be showing off, I forgot to have the camera pointing in the right direction, so. And probably by the time I change it, the sun will have gone, but never know, it might be all right. But yeah, they're out. Really excited about today. I like say, I do like coming out with Jake, and probably 50% of the time, to be fair, he does really well and, it, and has outfished me. The last time we went out, we were at Fort Victoria, and uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't the best session for either of us. I think we managed two dogfish between the two of us, so yeah. We've got, both got our fingers crossed that today we can pull something out of the bag. But I'm feeling confident. We've got great bait. Literally picked that up yesterday on the way home from work. We've got a rod out each. Normally Jake fishes with one, so he's doubling his chances, in my opinion, already. I know a lot of people say it doesn't really work like that. It doesn't double your chances just having two rods. Which I get. I do understand you can focus more on one rod, but he's got two rods with two baits in. In my, my humble experience, it means he's got twice the chance. Right, see you back here, Crisps. Have a drink of Luke's side. Hopefully we can bring you back to a fish or just me doing some more rigging up. Look at that for a wave. So we've got some proper waves coming in here now. But yeah, how beautiful is that, the sky tonight? It's been an absolutely glorious day today. 
It's been pushing like 14, 15 degrees today, which is absolutely lovely. And it definitely makes you feel like summer's spring, certainly, or summer's around the corner, which means, for me, bream time. But yeah, the rods have probably been out there for maybe 15 minutes. sort of might be getting a bite then on my big bait but it's probably the swell like I say it's basically a set set of waves coming through or the set waves which are obviously bigger um, and it's just playing a little making all of our rods bounce at the moment but high tide tonight is about half past nine I believe and I think it is probably I don't know 20 past six maybe half past six so we'll be fishing Probably for another four hours, I would have thought. Or longer, depends if we caught any fish or not. But yeah, we'll get those tip lights lit up in a minute. And then uh, move the camera so you can see the rods. Right, hopefully you can see both the the uh, my rod tips one of my batteries is quite a bit flat I would say is the right word for it but I'm thinking you can just about make them out and the one on the right is one of my older ones which is much bigger but it's all broken but it's on there anyway like I say because the, the rod tip obviously on that Akios is a lot thicker I say a lot thicker it's a normal thickness for a rod I'm so used to having thinner tips on the rods but uh, yeah, I really like the way it sits. I've, I've always liked it when they're like a, a J curve rather than a C curve. Like I so say, I've only been fishing for four years, so I don't really know what I'm talking about anyway. But for me personally, I just like the way it looks when it just tips over like that. They're really tippy. You can see the whole bite, more of a tippy bite rather than just the whole rod moving. Um, and like I say, I'm, I get excited about catching any fish, so. It doesn't have to be a massive fish to give me a massive bite. If I get a pout today, we get a couple of pout between us, we haven't blanked. And that to me is why we come out fishing, so. But like, if I get a pout on that big bait though, I'll be pretty surprised. So Jake's just gonna bring his, uh, his little two at flapper in now. And I think to be honest, I'm gonna do the same. Uh, they've been out there for maybe 20 minutes or more, 25 minutes maybe. I'm going to leave the bigger bait out there for a little bit longer, but I'm not going to get a spare rig ready or anything tonight. I'm going to take it nice and easy, nice and chilled. A nice relaxed session, just me and Jacob having a nice time. But yeah, let's bring that in. See if we've got any bait left. We probably haven't. I think what I'll do is when I bring it in, I'll change the battery. So yeah, so both Jake and I, Jake I reckon is Mr. Strap Conger because his rig is absolutely tangled to anything. Uh, and no bait, and I've got no bait on mine either, so. We need to be a little bit more on point, I think, with the, uh, the smaller rigs. Let's say the sea is warming up now, so there's much more potential, I guess, for for crab activity and all that sort of stuff. Right, let's get this out, clean my hands. I'm not hoofing this out, I'm just sticking it out in the middle of the bay. There is a buoy with a rope floating on the surface, so I've got to make sure I'm not over the top of that. Uh, which I think that is directly over the top of. I like to say, we might, at the moment, I'm just using strips of squid uh, on the flapper, but I may well just put a couple of little strips of mackerel on there in a minute. Like I say, it's mainly, we've got a small, small hook rig just to hopefully keep us busy uh, with something to play around with, hopefully we get a few little bites. Uh, and then obviously the bigger one, targeting something decent. So it's pretty much how I fish most of the time anyway. But I'm going, to, um, I'm going to get a couple of mackerel baits all ready to go. 
Like I say, I'm not going to get spare rigs ready today. And then we've both got another bait ready then. As soon as we bring that in, we can just snip that old one off and we chuck a new one on there. Oh, that's a bite. Look. That is a bite. Literally just turned around. Woohoo! Yeah, it's seen that way, didn't it? Literally just getting some. Yeah, that's. I think that could be. Could be on there. Ooh, that is exciting. Right, let's get this out of the way. I was just getting another bait ready for it anyway. Let's have a look. Hey. You did on that fresh one. Yeah, I think there's something on here. Dunno. Dunno. Yeah, I think there is. Right? Just went really light. Sure. Ah, oh, look at that, little strat conga. Oh, tight. Yeah, on that massive baitlet. That it's got itself all wrapped up in it. Well, it's target species. Yeah. But it's properly made a mess of that and he's hooked oh, right up. Yeah, that, that's not going to come undone. Right, i tell you what, can you go and grab the little scissors, the bait scissors, and we'll just cut this oh, off. Oh, hang on, I might be able to get it undone. Ah, uh, stop winding up. Right, snip it, snip that line just there. Ah, sorry, mate. That's all right. right behind that rubber thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, snip it there. It's the only thing with these little ones. Here we go. <laughs> Yowzer! Shit. Oh, he's off. You good? Woo! Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, well, he's off anyway. Right, so we got a target species. We got a conga. It's a tiny little strap. And he got totally wrapped up in my rig, wrapped up in my in my leader and everything. And a little bugger properly latched onto my finger. But anyway, we got him unwrapped. Let's get it back out. Let's get another rig on there because I'm about to hack to bits. And hopefully we can get another fish. Yeah, little sod. Yeah, definitely a lesson learned there. That's a couple of times I've been had by fish now. Get my fingers too close. Be absolutely amazed at the strength of that bite then. Properly clamped down and it wasn't letting go. I mean, they've only got tiny teeth. Can you imagine what a proper sized conga would do? It'd absolutely destroy your finger. So absolutely pulled it into a blood blister and everything where it's pinched it. Bloody thing. Right, let's get this bait back out anyway. I'm gonna sort that rig out, retie it. Probably need to change one on the left because I think I was getting a couple of bites, but then because we had that one mucking around trying to get that one untangled and get it back in the water because obviously I don't want it to be out for too long and it was totally wrapped up in my leader. But anyway, fish on. Tagged up. So yeah, I must admit, I have got into the habit. Check me out. Hey, Boy Scout, first aid kit and some antibacterial gel just in the event I get a hook or something because they're all dirty they're all covered in slime they're all covered in fish guts squid guts so I'm going to squirt a bit of this give it a bit of a clean whack a plaster on and I'm good to go again but yeah let's quickly do that get another rig ready for Jake I think he might be snagged up oh he got it back mate well done but yeah let's get on it I've got an injury I've got a boo boo But yeah, just going back to the uh, to that rod. Um, 
Nobby did say, because it's a glass tip, um, they have a tendency to, after the cast, wobble around a little bit. You, that stings. Um, which, yeah, that definitely does. Uh, which is a bit of a strange feeling. But like I say, I'm not a pendulum caster. I'm not a, a big power caster. Maybe if I sort my cast out a little bit, then obviously I could possibly get, you know, a little bit more uniformed, a little bit more controlled. But um, as it is, I'm getting a bait out there. If I'm getting a bait out there, I'm fishing, so. There we go, not one to waste a nice mackerel head. There we go, mackerel head and guts. Look at it oozing. Get that out in a second. Yeah, we're both getting loads of little tippy tappy bites and then it just dies off. So I'm thinking it's something really small and it's just stripping the bait. Uh, apart from that little strap conga on the big baits, so that's been it. But Jake brought his in and it was ma completely stripped, so I can only assume that that was crab. But so we've probably been fishing for maybe an hour and a half. There's still plenty of time, I'm sure, sure we'll get something else. You got something, haven't you? Yeah. You got something! Uh, yeah, yeah. Got yourself a power, mate. We got some fresh bait, buddy. Hey. Yeah! No blank. Nice. There we go. Yeah, they're cool, aren't they? That's it. Reel it up and then do exactly the same. Let's say, pop it down in the... Nice and low down in the stand. Ooh. There we go. Just notice the bite then on that uh, Joey mackerel. There we go. So Jake's just had a pout. Woo! So we're not we're not blanking neither of us now. So he's just popped it back. He didn't want to use it for bait, which is totally cool. I said it's totally your choice. If you want to let it go, swim off and live to see another day, then pop it back in. So he's just chucked that one back. I was just getting a little bite then on the. Um, on the Joey mackerel. But yeah, cool. Neither of us are blank so far. Right, I'm just gonna just baiting up another Joey. You had a bite? Yeah, I thought I'd read it and I lost it. Oh, you're joking, which one? Is that the flapper, is it? Yeah. Oh, keep an eye on it, mate. You never know, it might come back. Sometimes they come back if you just drop it. Um, yeah, and it's basically just binding. So there's a whole, whole Joey, there you go, look, head off. Just to, just the tip of the tail off. It's on my bait tool, I'm just wrapping a load of elastic just to help prevent the crabs really tearing it apart. So Jake's getting far more activity than I am at the moment. <laughs> so I've got to try and up my game a little bit now. So we're going to chuck this out. Hopefully we can get us into something. I'll just put it on the rig now. I'm just getting a little bite now. So I'm just going to pop that, let's say the 5.0, basically right in the back of the crown of the head. There we go. Bind that on. And then that makes that hook point super super proud you really then you got something I think Jake might have another fish he's been very quiet so bind that all the way up smooth that hook up a bit Right the way up. Yeah, no? Yeah, you got another power up in here? Nice, mate. That's it, I knew it, he's out fishing me now, he's had two fish. Now we stick that circle right in the end of the tail. 
There we go, let's get that out. Well, I think we're getting a little bite here on this left-hand rod. It's been rattling for a little bit. We just baited up Jake's last, last chuck and I've got one ready to go down here as well, which is another uh, Joey mackerel, but I'm gonna bring this one in now and pack it up and away. Oh no, we can both just fish with one rod. Oh, I think there actually might be something on here. Who's that? Oh, it's a, just a crab. Yeah, it's gone a bit light again now. Yeah, I think it might have just been a crab. Oh no. Did get a little pouting after all. Oh, we got one each now, mate. <laughs> well, two, two each, rather, because you had two pouting, didn't you? There we go. Tiny little pouting, but that's two fish. We've got one, we've had two fish each. Jake's had two pouting, I've had a little strap, but I'm just about to chuck out this last bait, Joey mackerel. This one, I'm gonna put it back to be fair, because we've used up all of our bait. I'm not gonna chuck this one in the freezer. This one can go back and uh, probably go and feed a conger that we could have caught. Yeah, it's very lucky that one. If I'd have caught that at the beginning of the session, it would have been going back out there as bait, but not this time. So let's change this one. And, uh, and then we'll be calling it a night. There we go. That is the last bait of the night. Joey mackerel, tail's tip nipped off, head's nipped off. Let's get it out. Okay. Yes. Right. My first ever conga. Jake got his conga. It's not big, but. Mate, it doesn't oh, matter. You got yourself your conga. Well done, mate. Oh, I'm buzzing for you. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well done, mate. Oh, that's so cool. There we go. We were literally just about to pack up. Jake was getting a bite, and it looked like it came off. And then, uh, and then he's just really. I was just about to do his sign off, and I looked over, and he's looking down, and he's got himself a conga. Just got to quickly take a picture for him. Sure, I got you. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Wicked. Well done, mate. Oh, I'm absolutely chuffed. Literally, last cast. We've got no bait left whatsoever. There you go, mate. There's your phone. Well done, dude. Well done. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So, I'm going to bring this one in anyway. He's got both of his rods out now. We pack the other ones away. I've probably told you that already. Oh, but I made up. Little bite. I said, oh, do you might have a fish on there? He reeled in, he said, oh, there's nothing there. So I walked over to do the sign off. And then lo and behold, he's got himself his first conga. So I'm absolutely buzzing for him. And that's what we came out for. We came out to enjoy ourselves and for Jake to get a conga and he did. Stoked. Right. I hope you enjoyed it. We've really enjoyed ourselves tonight. It's been really chilled, super relaxed. It's only just gone 10 o'clock, so we're going to be able to get home, chill out, have an early night. It doesn't get much better than that, does it? So until the next one, please take care, stay safe, and maybe I'll see you out there. Cheers. Yes. Yeah, mate. <laughs> I can't believe very very last bait in the water 